Hi, I'm Ken Nunn, I'm the Technical Director of Magnuson Products, and we're here to talk about the Heartbeat Supercharger. Today we're looking at this cutaway Heartbeat Supercharger. We cut it away so you can really see how the air can flow through the superchargers. It also shows some of the other finer features that we'll get to. One of the biggest challenges with building a supercharger for a sports car is the low hood clearance. So typically something like a Corvette has very little under hood clearance. Fitting a supercharger into a, a Corvette is a real challenge because we also have a lot of sound deadening and other aspects to take care of. In addition, the, the engine itself, being a 90 degree V8, did make it a little bit easier because we were able to sit the rotors right down in the base. But there is a lot of complexity in the valley plate of the, the Gen 3 engine, Gen 4 engine. So getting around all those, the major challenge we have was getting the rotors down low enough, but without inducing heat soak. And that's one of the things that made this project particularly unique. Traditionally, and, and certainly historically, over many generations of superchargers have been focused on the outlet air, getting the air from the rotors into the engines, up through here and down through there, without taking a lot of consideration into getting the air into the rotors. And in actual fact, this area here, the intake area of the, the heartbeat supercharger, is so very important to keeping it so efficient and so cool. And one of the big challenges was getting the air past the coupling. So we came up with an entirely new design, a very sleek input shaft with a unique pentalobe coupling that drives the front of the rotors without introducing a lot of turbulence. The intake air comes in and can very easily flow into the very finely ported intake port of the rotor. As it comes out through the discharge port, it's then got a nice area where it can expand and dissipate to ensure all, the, all of the face of the charge air cooler gets presented with the air maximum cooling efficiency through the charge air cooler and then down into the intake ports. Distributed through a small plenum so that it's got enough room to dissipate but not so much room that it creates any any delay or any lag. It still retains that very nice responsive supercharger feel. One of the really cool things about the Heartbeat Supercharger is it optimises the ability for the heat and rotor group, the TVS rotor group, to reduce the amount of heat that's transferred into the charge. There is a myth in the industry that Eaton roots-based superchargers run warmer than twin screws. It is a myth. It has now been proven categorically that the discharge temperature on the Eaton TVS 2300 supercharger is cooler than the comparable twin screw. Add to that this unique design that we have of our charge air cooler, which is an extruded tube, not a folded tube, an extruded tube, louvered fin type charge air cooler. It's the same technology that Formula One used for keeping their engines cool by running their oil through these same sorts of tubes. They are very, very efficient and they recover very quickly. The, the really cool, cool thing about this is this helps keeps the heat soak down that and the design of the supercharger itself, where it's ne although it's nested in the V, it still has enough room for cool air to get around it, really ensures that the charge air temperature that it reaches the engine is a, as cool as it possibly can be. And we've seen some experiences where we're seeing only mildly, only marginally above ambient temperature getting to the engine, and the recovery is a few seconds to even get back down to ambient. When we sat down as a design team, we first started talking about the Heartbeat Supercharger being an underhood Corvette solution, and that was the focus. As we developed the product, we realised fairly soon in the piece that we could develop a product that suited the entire LS range, both previous models and some of the very, very high-end models like the LS7 engine. So we took another look at it and said, well, let's design this thing so it can be really pushed to the limit. One of the areas that we focused on was the inlet area, as I mentioned before. Getting the air into the supercharger was absolutely key. So we put a, effectively a plane through here and said, anything forward of that point, we need to be able to make modular. That opened a whole door for putting on very, very large throttle bodies and throttle bodies at different angles to suit different vehicles. 
Then we took that modular concept to another level with the heartbeat lid. And making the entire lid modular meant that we could use different lid designs for different vehicles. Effectively, the Corvette had to be very low for the, for the hood clearance, but there are other vehicles like the Cadillac CTSV and the ZL1 Camaro that have got a lot more space. And that's a fairly, a fairly unique situation where we can take a sub-assembly and interchange lids and turn it in from a Corvette-specific product to then take that same supercharger and put it on a Commodore. One of the great advantages of having the lid interchangeable is we can take a unit straight off a Corvette, change the lid, and put it onto a ZL1 Camaro or a Commodore or a CTSV, simply by changing individual components. That's a great situation for the hot rod community because now they can take any model and mix and match whatever they wish. We currently, as, as this one is, this is an LS3 L98 L76 type version, which fits the LS3 port shape. We also have the, the same product to suit LS7, and we're currently working on a cathedral port product for the LS1, 2, and 6 range of earlier vehicles. That covers the whole range of the Gen 4 GM range, GM product, with a, with a very modular unit. In that modular system, we also have the ability to increase the charge air cooler. So the charge air cooler on this Commodore unit is deeper and at an angle, whereas these ones are slightly shallow but a bit wider. So we can manage to get even better cooling just by changing the lid. There's nothing particularly unique about having two charge air coolers in a supercharger. What's unique about Heartbeat is that the style of charge air cooling we're using is extremely efficient. We're using an extruded tube and a louvered fin and the size and shape of those features, those items, enable us to have very little pressure drop from the discharge side of the rotor to the side that goes to the ports. That results in a far better charge getting to the engine without sacrificing any pressure, which means that we're not having to push the supercharger so hard to get the same power. By having really good, efficient charge air cooling, it means that the air is entering the engine and it's a lot more dense, you get a lot more bang for buck. Quite literally, the, the fuel will burn cleaner, the fuel will burn faster, and it'll burn to create more power, more torque. The other significant advantage of a system like this is the recovery time. If you're just driving through traffic and you've got slow moving air coming over the engine, in more traditional superchargers, that can become a problem because you get a lot of heat soak under the hood. Because of the design of the charge air coolers and the way that the air travels through the supercharger, it enables us to have very, very quick recovery. So although temperatures may go up because we're just simply not getting enough air past the vehicle, the intercooler system still keeps the air cool, and if it does ever get hot, it gets cool very quickly. So the recovery time is extremely fast. This charge air cooler system is one of the big benefits that we offer for people who already have a supercharged GM engine, the LSA engine, because the charge air cooler on those LSAs is fairly limited to what it can do. It's designed to have very stringent NVH criteria and hood clearance for pedestrian impact, with things that we don't necessarily need to be quite so critical about. So that allows an LSA owner to go from a 1900 TBS unit to a 2300 TVS unit. The conceptual design of the air flowing in through the rotors, up through the discharge port, into the plenum, through the charge air coolers, and down into the cylinder head was a key feature to ensuring that heat soak didn't become a problem. There are some products out there that do something vaguely similar, but take the air then underneath the rotors and across to the other side. One of the big, one of the many disadvantages of that is that the air gets heated by the engine, and that that's a pretty bad thing. Further to that, it means that they can't use all of the fasteners to can put the put the supercharger onto the engine. Uh, we use all of the fasteners that GM supplied that we can bolt down because when you're putting some pressure in there, the last thing you want to have is only eight of the ten fasteners being used. There may be a perception by having the air come up through the charge air cooler and go down to the ports that were sacrificed runner. But we've actually got slightly more 
port separation than even on the standard LS9. And so the thought that we're reducing torque by having less runner, that's a myth. As soon as the engine is under boost, the, the length of the runner is almost negated. So we've sort of surrounded everything in one nice, neat little package. The Heartbeat Supercharge was recently independently tested by Lingerfelder Performance Engineering. They took an LSA engine, did some work to it, camshaft, ported the cylinder heads, and bolted on a, a Heartbeat Supercharger. So it's still standard displacement of 378, 376 cubic inch. They put it on race fuel and pulled the string. More than 900 horsepower, around 920 horsepower, and enormous torque. And that's still on a standard displacement engine. The Heartbeat Supercharger can support quite easily seven litre engines. We're talking 427 cubic inch with a 2300 blower on it and running the LSA drive, we can spin it up to about three times crank RPM, producing some serious horsepower. That's where some of the LSA community are really starting to see some benefits. Even though we can build these really big engines and make ultimate use of the, the supercharger as it sits here, even in a standard off-the-shelf shipped as we, as we sit it in the box solution, we're seeing some really significant gains over traditional product. Traditional products typically see in the high 400s, 470, 480 range at the wheels. We did a back-to-back -back comparison and we're seeing over 520 in the 520, 530 range for a direct bolt-on. Our Australian distributor is fitting these to the HSV. The HSV is a Holden Commodore with, fitted with an LS3. And straight out of the box with the install kit, bolted on, they're seeing way over 520. They're typically seeing in the 550 range. With a bit of tweaking, they can even get it a bit further. Run it on E85 and it becomes wild. One of the criteria we set as a design spec was that we needed to be able to install the supercharger as easily as possible. I think we achieved that pretty well. One of the key features to that was being able to keep the displacement on demand or active fuel management system. So the heartbeat supercharger can fit straight over the top of active fuel management, DOD valley plates. All of that can be retained. So to further enhance the fuel economy, you can keep your displacement on demand intact. Calibration can be tricky, it's not something that we include in the standard kit, but it can be activated. To ensure we satisfied the brief of making it easy for installers, we went to the extreme of putting O-rings on every interface and dovetailing the O-rings in there so that during install they can't fall out. You no longer do you have to look around underneath your car to see what O-ring you dropped at the end of the install, it's never going to come out, but if you do have a need to replace it, you can hook it out, and they are standard off-the-shelf O-rings. Those O-rings are used right through the system, along with silicon seals on the charge air coolers, and the manifold to head interface uses the standard LSA gasket, which has even got little retainers to hold it in place as you're putting the supercharger down so it doesn't slide out of the way, you can't get it wrong. For those that just want moderate improvement, we can do smaller pulleys and the pulleys are just a interchangeable pulley on the front and that can even be done with the 8PK belt to give it extra grip if the same belt system is driving another component. It doesn't need 8PKs to drive the heartbeat supercharger. It has got so little loss that a 6PK will drive it as fast as it can possibly go. Wherever possible, we've tried to use off-the-shelf original GM equipment. Main reason for that is it's all OE certified and it supports our three-year warranty. So we've been able to utilize the Corvette LS9 or the CTSV LSA fuel rail, and that's a direct bolt-on, so we know it's gonna be perfect. And we've even used, wherever possible, we use the standard GM injectors, and if somebody wants to have more fuel than what the standard GM injector can supply, there are aftermarket ones available, which we can also supply. We even went as far as making sure that we used the standard GM map sensor, which fits into here, and in some applications fits into the lid, like on here for the ZL1. And we've even used GM 
intake air temperature sensors, IATs. The easy install feature of the design brief was a bit of a challenge at times, but we managed to come up with some quick connect fittings for the venting and also for the charge air cooling. This makes it real easy for both the home installer and for the authorised dealer to do installs that are quick, easy and fail safe. The optimised air path past the input shaft into the rotors, the way it discharges from the rotors, through the charge air cooler and down, that all of that, that mantra of reducing the waste has enabled us to have more power for the same boost. In other words, it's more efficient, it's cooling better, everything lends itself to getting the best bang for every pound of boost that you get. I've really enjoyed designing this project. I've had worked with wonderful people, We've got a really fantastic solution. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you do too.